All right, welcome to episode 63, and this begins the first episode of two episodes under the Handling Hazardous and Infectious Materials section. So episode 63 is entitled, Identify Biohazard Flammable and Infectious Materials. So this is very important, you know, you got to do um, frequent, the, the one I see that kind of um, presents itself more most frequently personal, personally in my experience is uh, maybe patients with uh, chemotherapy. That's a very common hazardous material. Um, the biggest big thing is you, you're following your hospital's policy and procedure for handling biohazardous material. You may have a slightly different policy and procedure at different places, maybe different colored bags, um, different colored material, color coded. Uh, but, uh, excuse me. So you got to make sure you have that. Ensure your proper labeling is in place. And let me just explain why this is important. Let's say I've got a patient that's on chemotherapy. They're actively getting chemotherapy. And for those of you that don't know, when someone is actively getting chemotherapy, their bodily fluids are considered toxic. So I can't put the linen from a patient that has ex ha the linen. Maybe we did a bed change and they were incontinent. And there's urine on some of the linen, not just the throwaway chucks pad, but the linen. And it needs to be washed. Well, I can't... That, that urine is toxic. Not just like, you know, regular Joe Schmo urine. Like this actually has chemo, you know, it's considered toxic. So it has to be handled differently. So you got to be able to... You can't just throw it in the regular linen. The housekeeping staff or the staff that washes the linen has to be aware that this needs to be handled differently. It is hazardous material and we have to wash it differently. So it's put in a different bag. It's put in, let, let's say, maybe a yellow, thicker bag as opposed to a regular dirty linen bag that's, you know, maybe cloth or, or something and has a different label on it. So you got to make sure that everybody at every point that would come in contact with this knows this is hazardous. So that's labeling is essential. Proper handling is essential. Um, you may have specific checkoffs. Um, you know, if you have maybe a chemo patient or something else, um, you, you your you may have to like sign a competency or do a demonstrate that you know how to handle this stuff appropriately. I, I actually let's see when was that Ebola uh, 2015 when all that Ebola stuff came out or maybe it was 2014. But either way, I actually on at my hospital volunteered to be part of the Ebola response team so that if a patient res you know presented with that, myself and a few other coworkers would be the ones responsible for caring for that patient. So, you know, we had to go through a lot of training for safe handling techniques for dealing with not only their linen and their trash, but also if someone with Ebola had died, what we would do with their body. So it's really important to know that, you know, if you, maybe if you have a patient that passes that has a implantable, um, you know, radiation or something like that. Another um, aspect is to um, never recap any needles um, as those can result in a needle stick. And if it's a patient that has, you know, a specific issue going on, you have much higher um, likelihood of disease transmission if it's someone with maybe biohazard or infectious material. So you gotta be, so you never recap and you ensure that there's proper storage devices for used needles. Typically these are color-coded bins, maybe on the wall or sitting on a counter. You know, they're puncture resistant, they're leak proof. You know, you can't stick your hand in there at all. Um, oh, and, and there's my little tip to pr avoid a needle stick as well is a lot of, I've seen people, and actually I used to do this until a physician told me not to, I used to put try to like put something in the um the needle bin and I kind of cram it in there and you just you need to put it in there and drop it like don't get your hand in there any at all even if it's slightly because something could be sticking out I and mean, the likelihood is it that it won't but you never want to risk that so 
that is the really important aspects of identifying the biohazardous and flammable and infectious materials. Part of that is also knowing what those are. Um, hospitals typically will have their um, documents and, and resources where you can look up a substance. You can see, you know, if it's flammable, how to properly handle it. Um, you know, those are pretty all-encompassing, so it's not realistic to really read the whole thing. It's one of those where if you are dealing with a substance, then you can look it up and see kind of the way to handle it. Um, and and a lot of hospitals and systems have infection prevention or in infectious disease departments where you can really um, hash out stuff if you're not sure and ask questions. Never ever assume ask questions. There's no, no shame in that. So um, that concludes episode 63. Identify biohazardous, flammable, and infectious material. This has been another episode of the unofficial Inclex Prep Podcast. To get the massive PDF guide that goes along with this podcast, head over to nrsng.com slash Inclex Prep. That's nrsng.com slash Inclex Prep. That's a free download that you can take with you anywhere, and you can basically have this podcast in text format. Our goal here at nrsng.com is to give you the tools and the confidence that you need to succeed in nursing school, on the Inclex, and in your life as a nurse. We want you to succeed, and we want you to become part of this movement of nurses that is dedicated and motivated to learning and becoming the best nurse that they can possibly be. My name is John Haas, RNCCRN, and I'm the founder of NRSNG.com, and I sincerely thank you for being here, and I'm so proud of you for taking this step in your journey. Now you know what time it is now. It's time to go out and be your best self today. Happy nursing.